So, so just in terms of um, kicking off with the, the the sort of first question, which was, um, you know, presumably when you before you sort of started the residency, you had some kind of uh, I don't know idea in terms of how it would work and what what how it would unfold. Um, how how did the sort of residency meet those kind of expectations that 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 you had when you before you sort of started it? Yeah. Um... I think I didn't really have I didn't really have any like specific expectations, which I, I think is a is a good thing. I mean, uh, overall, I was just because of the the open ended nature of um, of the residency. Um, so it was it, it's, it's 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 this thing which is kind of like really really good because there just aren't many opportunities where you can just explore and there isn't much pressure. But obviously, there's um, a lot of pressure that you put on yourself. I, I really wanted Museum of the Home and, 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 and ArtQuest to feel like chosen someone who'd appreciate the opportunity. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> this feeling that I always have. It's like, don't like waste this opportunity. You're so lucky. Like it, it's often like not a good way to be because you put yourself under a lot of pressure. So, and, and, you know, like I, I kind of like massively over, over, overthink these things a lot, get very, very anxious. Um, but I, I didn't I didn't need to, to be so anxious at, at all because I was just so comfortable there. Like as soon as I got there, like like um, the, the collections manager, Amy Folds, is just like um, like amazing. And, and actually, like I think that I, I think because especially because Museum of the Home hadn't kind of like run this residency before. And I think they maybe didn't kind of quite expect how sort of collaborative and kind of communicative I was interested in it in it, in it being so like mm-hmm. like I had loads of conversations with with Amy and she was like a massive help and and it was just like so interesting to learn about the um how how the museum works in in terms of how it kind of like takes in objects into the collection and and all of this kind of thing and that then became a huge part of how I thought about each each object and each piece of documentation and 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 everything that I was um that I was doing that I was um, engaging with and so like it was a lot more kind of like social sociable than I than I kind of like expected in some ways and I I think I felt a lot more kind of part of the the museum as an institution Mm -hmm. um than than I necessarily expected where like I thought well it it could just be that I'm I'm essentially essentially you know I'm 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 choosing some some objects from the catalog and I am kind of like sitting in the in the in the collections library and just kind of looking at those that obviously I was doing a lot of that but that wasn't really the case at all and and I think because for the whole thing I had um uh support work uh, with with me as well that was like really really great as well like um first support support worker Janine um who unfortunately (laughs) got got a full-time job so had to so halfway through, other support worker Haley sort of came in, but the the, the whole thing, like in, in those things, was, was super super collaborative. The whole thing was ex- externalized, which is how I prefer to work anyway. Um, the, I, I I think kind of through speaking and and I, and I kind of I, I very much think outside myself a bit. So so because that process was, was happening, I, th- I think it allowed more conversations with Amy and things like that. So I I think that kind of I, I was more. I was more comfortable than I expected. It went quicker than I expected as well. Of it's course, not a long time, is it? To. No, it's not. It's not at all. And also, like, it's sometimes hard to know what the progression of your research actually is. And this wasn't necessarily any kind of expectation either way. But I think when you're when you're researching as an artist, you know, rather than a kind of academic researcher, that just is this kind of constant anxiety or at least for me of like am I doing this right am I really getting something out of like looking at this object or engaging with this object and then the kind of impact that leads kind of proves that that it, it that there is essentially yeah so I, so I, I think and in terms of the closing event as well all I'm talking about is like <laughs> anxiety that I think <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but but listen, you know, I, having run these residencies before and talked to some of, uh, you know, other residency recipients, that is a very real thing mm. because, uh, you know, it is. And it's the flip side to this, you know, the openness and the non, uh, you know, the non outcome, the fact that it's not an outcome focused residency. Uh, and that the, the the flip side to that openness is this uncertainty and this sort of anxiety that does come with like, yeah, not knowing where where you're going to go and what you're going to find. Uh, and if you're going to find anything as a residency provider, that's a, a, a risk that we're, you know, that we need to be like aware of and comfortable with as an organisation that's running mm. residencies like this, that, that there will be some times where actually there are a lot of, there are a lot of dead ends and there isn't sort of something that 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 sort of feeds practice in a different way but I'm I'm you know I'm really pleased to hear that there was a lot of exciting stuff that you found that sounded like it really was you know firing off different kind of uh directions and connections in in your sort of practice which sounds really great yeah def- yeah definitely you know and, and that kind of closing event as well because it happened quite a while after the um the residency kind of felt like this sort of next phase, which I think was really, really good. I'm really glad I did it like that rather than something that I was planning for like while I was doing the residency or that I had to quickly put together afterwards. Yeah. So you, you started to talk a little bit about um, the, the, the materials and stuff that you engage with. Can you remind us which bits of the collection and what materials in the collections <laughs> library you, you kind of engaged with? Um, yeah. Um, so I started out by looking at, um kind of textiles and things and fabrics and kind of soft furnishings that that kind of stuff um because I, w- I was again I was I was interested and in kind of when I initially applied to this I was interested in the sort of like sort of tactile experience of like sort of like surfaces in the home and um I I kind of I started off by looking at those but then one of the one of the first sort of things that um that I looked at was this huge um this huge sa- sort of sample book from the 90s from the late 19th century um that had probably been used by kind of like a traveling uh a, a traveling salesman um that was filled with fabric samples basically and it was and it was it was it was it was absolutely huge and it was a wonderful exciting thing to look at and obviously it kind of like kind of warped a lot under its own weight a, a lot and, and and a lot of the kind of like the the um sort of dyes in the fabric had like transferred to the other pages oh, nice. um yeah and but, but a lot of the because it was a book obviously the kind of the the vibrance of a lot of those patterns had been kind of like sort of like retained as well um and I, I think there were um, some kind of sort of patterns that you wouldn't also like wouldn't ne- even even though I wasn't really concentrating on like actual kind of patterns or anything. There were a lot of patterns that you wouldn't necessarily associate with the late 19th century, you know, um, and it, it was it was it was fascinating. And then there was all the evidence of kind of like bits of, you know, bits of writing in pencil um, referring to the year that a certain um um, a certain uh, fabric or pattern sort of came in and how many have been sold and, and this kind of thing. Um, and, and also like I, I, the interesting thing was that it was a, it was kind of like it was a composition as, 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 a, as a whole and, and it, it was a kind of uh, an, an, an object in, in itself that that was a kind of it was a, it was a kind of a mini collection if, if, if you like and th- th- that was kind of like super interesting the kind of just the sort of the sensory experience of that was something that kind of definitely sort of set me off throughout the whole th- throughout the whole kind of like residency and sort of kept at the back of my mind um and then returned to uh way later um as I started to explore, I began to um, move away just from this sort of like the the feeling of like fa- fabrics and furnishings um, onto like the body as a whole. Because as as I looked more broadly at the collection and I looked at the Document and Homes collection, like uh, especially, um, 
and the way that the museum documents lived experience I realized that you don't have the, 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 the there's a real absence of the body of this like the human body within that um and that you might have like you know interviews or surveys with people talking about what they do in their homes um or talking about what they like about their homes but the actual bodily existence is is very very absent um and you know you saw that a lot especially in in, in reference to kind of like disability like <laughs> there was like something about quite detailed documented home collection i think and um with with photographs and um and in, in you know interview survey kind of thing and it was obvious in the photographs that this person had like a like a stair lift mm -hmm. but that, that just like wasn't referenced at all in, in anything but that's like a, a, a huge change to like how you would um how you'd experience your 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 home like in terms of your body you know what i mean so um so like that was kind of just kind of like one of many examples of how the, the like the sort of bodily experience wasn't really part of how we think about lived experience sometimes um but also because it's really really hard to document i looked at sort of a few different kind of like sort of sections so 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 i kind of i looked at disability and i looked at um yeah kind of like i looked at sort of like fabrics and things like that and then i looked at um at health more 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 generally and kind of like health and kind of sort of wellness and fitness and these kind of things in relation to the home um, and and then i also looked at objects that had evidence of the human body left on them um which is something like kind of like really important i think in, in terms of how of understanding the place of the body in the home so there was really interesting stuff such as, uh, you know, like kind of furniture that when maybe arms were kind of uh, they'd been sat, obviously been sat on, they'd been kind of like worn away and things like that. Or curtains had almost kind of holes in them because of where they'd like hit parts of like the windowsill and things like that. Like and, and kind of like uh, b because of like when they'd been kind of drawn and sort of drawn and like dragged across. So kind mm. of like. Um, and, and all of this stuff is about the inter interaction between like the uh, the object, the kind of like sort of structure of the home and then and then the body. And it, yeah, it was anyway th that. So so that's kind of like what I looked at more and more. And um, but, but mainly like what I was looking at is like how how do the objects in the museum? So that's the kind of like the object collection and and sort of books and um and uh, the documented homes collection how 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 did they give, show us evidence of the body and you know in terms of like disability looking at looking at uh, disability within the collection that's there's very little mm. um i mean there's, there's lots of stuff that it's also very very hard to find because a, a lot of stuff about disability isn't it, it's not labeled as such it's if someone was kind of just researching sort of disability um and sort of like disability in 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 the, in the home and how that you, you know you wouldn't um you'd you'd have to search kind of very very hard and often I stumbled across stuff on on accident or so kind of um so 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 yeah like I was looking at all of those sort of like different sections and trying not to be kind of too prescriptive and also like there is this again kind of anxiety or or like like a want to kind of like narrow down your kind of research mm. I, I feel that like I broadened it really because I felt like that was sort of the best way to sort of experience uh, to use the time and kind of experience everything that the that the sort of museum actually had you know like the body and the body in the domestic space is like a massive massive um sort of like research proposition you know yeah so i, I it's, it's absolutely huge but then also like i was dealing with the uh, collections specifically in the museum and how that related to those and you know the, the, the museum has a lot lots and lots of stuff but it's not like an absolutely like mammoth co collection either so I, I wanted to kind of like so i do think the scope was kind of like enough that i got to really investigate um a, a, like a lot of the objects and 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 obviously the in, the interesting thing about kind of like bodily experience of the home is that the way that i could explore objects was quite sensory as mm -hmm. well so just going into the um 
um you know going into the in, into the stores like into into the into the stacks and stuff and just touching things and opening things and, and looking at things which I was allowed to do which was like really 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 great um and Amy was kind of really understanding of my kind of like sort of like needs there in terms of my research um and just being able to like just pull out furniture and sit on it or whatever and open drawers on things and kind of investigate stuff in terms of the senses so it could be quite hands-on in terms of the way that you engage with materials oh yeah oh absolutely and like kind of you know amy was saying like it's (laughs) it's kind of something that the museum wants to get more confident with and get more kind of like used to and kind Mm -hmm. of like allow you know like allowing that kind of like sort of touch and that kind of tactile stuff and like there was never any really any sort of question about that like it was it was always kind of trying to sort of facilitate what I was interested in and going into it the go you know like going into it the museum knew that I was interested in tactility knew I was interested in 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 touch and physical Mm -hmm. experience so like they so everything was kind of set up so I could experience that like absolute sort of like sort of uh, greatest degree possible. Great. And um, I mean, one of the things that we were talking about earlier was this sort of anxiety around um, academic versus, say, artistic research, for, mm. for, for want of a better word. And like having worked with uh, museums over the years, one of the exciting propositions of working with artists is particularly because the, the the research approach might not follow traditional sort of academic pathways into the material. And there are uh, kind of slightly left field connections mm-hmm. that uh, visiting artists might make between um, kind of different aspects of the collection and the collection in their own sort of practice. So uh, I guess my question is, was there just in terms of your like relationship with the museum, did you notice um, uh, what in terms of your approach particularly sort of excited them? And was there much opportunity and there might not have been for interaction with the with the museum audience? Did you have any kind of sort of Hmm. connection in terms of, uh, you know, contact with museum audiences and stuff as part of your of your research? No, that's that's interesting. No, not really. Um, you, you know, obviously not until like the sort of closing event and stuff like that. But I think, I, I, I think it kind of like it taps into this idea of kind of like academic versus kind of artistic research and stuff like that. I I think a kind of a a museum actually um, is is a perfect way to is a perfect sort of environment in, in in general to explore I mean especially museum with a home but I think like museums in general mm. are a perfect kind of like environment to explore that concept or modern museums are kind of based on allowing visitors different levels of access to material mm. and also like an embodied experience as, as as well you know like gone are most of the time gone are the sort of the, the days of like um, very very kind of s- sort of sterile museums but 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 generally like when we when we when we go to kind of like a a museum we um our experience of the material is isn't just the material it's the it's the lighting it's the way it's kind of like the it's the, the way it's shaped it's the kind of the, the the route we take in 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 a museum um and it's the it's the it's the, the, the temp the temperature and the 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 sound of the, the the music you know you go to you go to museum of the home and um through those kind of like sort of sort of thin um galleries you know and um, that's a very very different sonic experience to go into say like the vna and these mm. huge open galleries with echoing footsteps sort of everywhere and stuff like that um so kind of like all of the and, and obviously something like museum of the home again that's, that's a linear experience you start at the start and you work your way through you work your way through um again very very different to like a to um a museum that is more um that, that has has sort of distinct galleries that you'd visit in no particular order for example um and that like 
and then obviously like within within the in the galleries themselves you have that that interaction between um the kind of like sort of written text mm. and objects and and video as well and then maybe kind of like interaction in in in, in some ways and touch and things and so I think that like all of this allows you to like engage with the material in in a way that suits you ideally mm -hmm. um and so I, I very much think that like so so kind of like museums and good museums are really about kind of like visitor agency and stuff like that and more and 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 more broadly a sort of agency over kind of like material um and agency over information which is uh, I think especially from a, like a neurodiverse perspective is like really uh, quite empowering. It's hard to engage with something like a book in anything but the kind of the 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 full impact or the full culmination of all that information. You know, it's it's harder to kind of like dip in, and it's um, certainly for me anyway. It's 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 often not a very kind of embodied experience. Yeah. Whereas um, whereas the experience of being in the in a museum of like walking around that museum is 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 um you 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 take things in by kind of osmosis and it's it it, it really is like a wonderful experience like that so I think then you can then it's a very long winded way of me saying that then as an artist researching in museums you can just exp explore that whole kind of spectrum between kind of like academic or um research and then just you know more kind of embodied or kind of surface level kind of research just kind of looking at these just flicking through different materials is just interesting you could go and you know i i, I do think that any artist could get a lot out of just going to um like one once a month just spending an afternoon in it like a, a sort of a different kind of like you know museum collections library or like archive or, or something like that yeah. and then and just look at some material and just kind of experience that material kind of like close up in a way that they have kind of control over mm -hmm. and then just there wouldn't have to be a set path or a set kind of research particular research interest you can kind of just sort of take this on and it kind of sits at the back of your mind for later. The public facing nature of a museum um, allows a kind of accessibility, a kind of scalable accessibility that works really well for artists, I think, because, be because artists aren't dealing with like pure information and they're not kind of dealing a lot of the times with uh, with, with making or presenting an, an, an argument necessarily. Um, and and it's kind of it's it's more that the, the application of of um, the the kind of like material application of thought a, a lot of the time that yeah. you kind of like it, it actually works perfectly in a, in a museum environment and and you know as well in, in your research if you ever get for me at museum of the home if I, if 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 i was stuck or if i was just lost focus a little bit i can then just go down into the galleries of the museum and and i can see this material in a it contextualized mm -hmm. that's like really powerful as well you know because kind of like I, I love like archives and stuff in general but i think that the 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 contextualization that the museum offers is kind of like sort of like really really powerful it's more powerful than necessarily just just the culmination of this ob these ob objects you know do you get a sense of how how the sort of research residency might have impacted on how you work um both in terms of your practice but also maybe in terms of how you approach research as as someone as an artist from like a kind of a sound background originally um and also performance so someone who's dealing with kind of quite kind of like transient things um sometimes it's object based work or kind of like sort of really kind of material graspable work can seem a little bit kind of like out of reach um i, I suppose but I, but i think that like dealing with 
dealing with the body and dealing with the body through looking at objects has 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 i think given me much more confidence and and also much more an impulse to deal with the kind of the physical um within my within my work and the graspable like with within my work and also kind of thinking about how that can be presented in terms of like the mus- the um the the objects and the kind of the museum experience and how I can kind of like use aspects like that, like within my own work, which is kind of what I went on to in the, um, which which heavily inspired what I did in the closing event um, in terms of kind of like a participatory kind of object, I suppose, and kind of creation of an, of an object. Um, and and I think, I think more, more broadly, it has definitely, made me interested in and and more confident in doing this kind of research at other institutions as well um and and understanding that a lot of uh a lot of institutions want people to go want artists to go in and kind of like look at the look at the collections and kind of like use those it's not just someone for, it's not just a space for someone doing um you, 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 a phd or whatever you know what i mean or writing a book um it, it is a space that's that's open to to artists um and also i think that the um the the fact that this ran over quite a few months as well um structurally it's it's kind of um having that kind of longer relationship with um institution because obviously I'm an early career artist and I've, I've I've done a lot of like smaller commissions um for organizations and had and and you know built up relationships over over time and kind of you, you know might have worked for that done work for that organization later but I don't really think I've necessarily ever had a um, a single project a sustained relationship over a single project for so long and and that has been kind of like really good and definitely taught me a lot about communicating mm. um in, in, you know kind of sort of co- communicating with kind of like museums and and institutions in in general um and also like organizing the event was difficult and i had a lot of help from Haley, my support worker in terms of organizing um organizing that closing event which i like really really needed um that that helped but kind of like being able to kind of put something on like like that and then also kind of like lead something which is not something that I really do as 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 an artist very much I'm not very confident about kind of public being public facing actually in a lot of senses um especially like as a person rather than just kind of like my 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 work having to do that and also seeing that not as like me as an artist like giving my like knowledge to people or something like that in, in that kind of sense but it being part of my process and a part of making something else um that was kind of that's definitely changed my approach as an artist and and I really 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 want to run more workshops like 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 I, I, I ran so so yeah I, I mean it's it's moved me on um leaps and bounds I think actually I it's it's like one of those opportunities that just it pushes you to the next to the next stage a little bit in your um in in how you think about your practice um so you mentioned the sort of closing event could you talk us through that a little bit like um more and say a little bit more about yeah what how it went what the format was you mentioned it was a workshop it'd be good to hear more about that yeah so so the the for the closing event, I, I sort of, you know, I looked at all my research and all this research, obviously into the into the into the the the, the bodily bodily documentation, um, or, or or the yeah documentation of the body in the home, and the and the lack of it, and kind of like trying to piece together what, like what was there really. That that was essentially what I was doing. I was looking at these different sections, you know, kind of like disability evidence of the body on objects, and the document homes collection, and then I was kind of like looking at like the kind of gaps between and that's where the body fits um so i wanted to do something that that kind of like related to that or maybe 
m- maybe kind of if if my kind of criticism and it's not it's not it's not really a criticism at all but but if it, we'll, we'll call it that if my kind of criticism was that i um th- there wasn't documentation of like the sort of sensory or bodily experience of the home um my question was well how <laughs> how do we begin to document that so i decided to kind of like return to touch which is actually kind of obviously like sort of sense of touch was kind of where I kind of started um in in the residency but like kind of like now I'd kind of like expanded it um to kind of like documentation of this experience and all these different objects like it was quite good to kind of return to return to specifically to touch um and obviously returning to touch because it is the most complex sense and it's a, it's it's a it's a well it's a multi-sensory sense right and there is this obviously huge debate as to whether touch constitutes a single sense um and so what i decided to do was to create a workshop that looked at how we how we can use different methods to document our experience of of, of touch in our homes and i wanted to use printmaking to, to do this because I think that printmaking is fun uh, and and it's it's a, it's a hands-on and kind of and 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 it's like a physical kind of like process it's something where you're you're in a constant negotiation with sort of material with the materials and and you're you're kind of sub subject to those materials which I, which I felt was kind of like a nice kind of I don't know, like yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's kind of like a nice metaphor for tactile experience. Gen- generally, when you're when you're kind of in your your home and, and 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 everything is a kind of like a negotiation with the um a negotiation with the furniture and the floor and the <laughs> and, and 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 everything. Especially when you think about like I kept returning to comfort and there's really interesting little gallery in the museum, um one of the sort of small one of the new galleries um about kind of comfort and how the idea of comfort's changed and this kind of thing and and like comfort in the home is 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 so interesting and the way that our bodies can relax in the home and the way our bodies will sh- all the different ways our bodies will shift to kind of find comfort and and you know this and this constant kind of discussion with like but you know like i'm sitting in this kind of slightly weird like wing back armchair that i found on found on the street actually um, <laughs> and kind of like and all the different ways and I don't have like a footstool so I'm always like putting my feet up like on like hang on like here here in my feet and like putting my feet up like against like the fireplace and stuff like yeah. that and like you know trying to find I'm wedging myself in all these kind of like weird positions and stuff and and you know you I'm, I'm it's this constant kind of like shaping around the kind of like the materials of the home and stuff so it's it's fun to kind of introduce that like printmaking as part of that I think mm-hmm. um but um but I and and, and also you can it's, it's something that a lot of people won't have done before and 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 it's things that you can have really interesting results not dependent on the kind of skill level um but i wanted to it, it was a workshop like specifically for like for adults as well um not kind of for like families or or or, or, or whatever it was something it was and it was important for me that people kind of like followed the process because to access and and confidently kind of articulate some of these quite abstract things i i wanted to kind of create a process that people could sort of follow so i, I started by talking about my um ex, sort of experience on the residency and what i looked at and then and then talking more specifically about um sense of um you know kind of like like sense of touch in the domestic sphere and then i started with some like written tasks i i, I asked people to sort of sort of where they were sitting in the room to 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 think about what they were touching and to think not just about their their hands but their whole bodies and kind of so like and write down all the objects that their bodies were touching so like feet touching the floor back touching the back of the chair elbows on the tip this kind of thing and then try and describe how each uh, point of touch felt so yeah, maybe the table was like hard or like maybe their feet were on kind of like squishy insoles. So that was kind of like sort of softer or something of their, their, their hand was on their, their, their head and then kind of leaning, you know, like all of this kind of thing. Um, and then I asked them to, to imagine they're in a place that they were, they were in their home, like a lot, like that might be like in bed, it might be sat on the sofa, it might be sort of 
standing in in the kitchen or something like that something somewhere that they spend a lot of time and and and, and i ask them to kind of think to repeat the task but for where their their body might land in in, in so in somewhere in somewhere like that as we sort of like went through that it becomes really obvious very quickly that when trying to describe some of these sensations that language is pretty useless really um so then i asked i asked people to think of a routine in in their home um or a movement through their home that could have been that could be something really small like literally just getting out of bed or it could be something bigger like coming home from work taking your shoes off and then making a cup of tea or or, or, or something like that um and I asked them to draw out a timeline and then do different make different points of the timeline in terms of like touching new surfaces and or, or move, you know like moving um into like a new room or like holding a different object something like that and then again kind of write what that object is like how how does it how does it feel so so I could get people to kind of start to understand that trans transition and then we moved to small abstract stuff and I was like okay for each part of that I want you to kind of draw like um just a small pattern that represents that element of touch um or like that kind of like sort of tactile experience I asked people to then draw floor plans of the homes just from memory very quickly and then think about that routine and 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 place these patterns like within the home and then place patterns for other um sort of tactile experiences and then start to kind of like trans translate this into kind of like really really simple just kind of mark making basically and then we moved on into the printmaking and so it did kind of like relief prints and lino uh, did um like monotypes and did uh collagraph printing uh, and with the collagraph printing we had like loads of bits of like carpet samples and like you know like like kind of textured surfaces like like wall wallpaper or, or flooring and stuff that's that's a fun around the house that we basically got just by like ringing up loads of companies and asking for uh for free sample um so so then then people were kind of like using the work that they'd done in the, in the written work to then make um, to make different prints people made some really really good stuff and then but the idea is and this is the next phase is like returning to this idea of like sample books I was talking about that one from the 19th century but there was a wallpaper sample book from the 1930s um, and there was a there was a, wall, a, a slightly bizarre wall covering um, sample book from the 80s that had all these like weird like felt wall coverings and stuff like that on the left you know who would have had that but anyway it was, the, the, I was really intrigued by those just those objects just as like compositions if you like so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with like an artist book binder and then I'm gonna use these kind of prints to make a kind of to, to make something some sort of book that is kind of like referencing the the sample books but is 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 a kind of a, a, a documentation of this the, the the experiences of these participants it's like a documentation of people's sensations around the home yes exactly yeah 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 and that's kind of like a starting point when you think okay well how do we document the body in the home this is this is a start it's it's not it's not kind of it's not perfect it's maybe not particularly accurate in, in some in some ways but I think it's it's quite an interesting it's quite an interesting idea of kind of like you know what is when, when you think of these kind of like of of the objects I was looking at the museums and the, the kind of the way that in terms of like information and what they give you they're always like flawed or do they never give you what you really want from them or 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 you can never you never know exactly how they were used or or, or that mark on it you, you, you can kind of make assumptions about what it is and, and, and I think it's this it's the same for using this kind of like material um and this kind of and, and this sort of yeah like documentation of, of 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 touch it's kind of like it will be inherently like imperfect um and, I, and I, I quite like that so yeah that's the next stage i'm really excited to, to make that and in in terms of sort of um realizing the, the 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 closing event um can you talk a little bit about the conversations that happened with the museum around it was it very much like 
did they just say, you know, you tell us what you want to do? Or was it more like negotiating in terms of, you know, this is who our audience is, this is what they're likely to sort of respond to? How, how did that conversation go? Um, I think there was a lot. There was a lot of discussion with uh, Sinead at Museum of the Home, and it was like, and which is really, really good, and um, really, really helpful. Just loads of discussions about like broad ideas to start with, then gradually kind of like narrowing it down to this particular like a, a, event. And these discussions kind of went on like alongside what I was kind of went doing the research. So, so it, it allowed me to kind of sort of shape it alongside that, which is really, really good. I think that in terms of it's interesting in terms of audiences, I don't think necessarily there was ever any kind of um, discussion necessarily about who the museum's audience exactly is. That Yeah, that's, that's quite interesting because I made it clear from the start that I didn't really want this to be, um, I didn't really want this to, to be something for like families or like kids um and and i think that i i spoke at first about kind of oh some sort of like panel discussion and in sort of discussion with Sinead it was thought of like maybe that's quite it's a little bit dry or like it's it's not really it's it's maybe not engaging people kind of like that much and i think it was that that kind of act of like that act of engagement which is which um rather than who what specific type of audience I was engaging because like really if you look at the sort of events that Museum of the Home are doing it's like they they are engaging all types of different audiences um and I, I think and you know they have stuff which is of interest of much more kind of like academic interest than stuff which is you know like for, 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 for families or has a broader thing and then obviously they have the kind of like the, the sort of more, more like local community out, outreach and stuff there is a real uh, there's a real broadness in terms of what they're doing. So I never felt like there were any particular expectations, but but I think definitely realising that even though the thought of audiences or like sort of people coming to uh, an event made me nervous, I think that like an audience is very valuable and you can kind of discover things about your practice through that. So I think that that was what kind of like led me onto the sort of participatory kind of sort of aspect because I, I wanted something that would feel of, of value to the people who came whether or not they were interested in my work or like my work uh, but then also something I thought well well something that could be of, of value to me in, in that sense as well rather than just the experience of organizing the workshop it was kind of like well what can like what can an audience kind of give me that's going to help me in this in in, in in my practice and you know like you think about I think about like kind of work in have done in theatre and when you have like work in progress showings and how valuable an audience is to get kind of feedback from and stuff and and um so I was thinking about like that, that a, a lot as well and um that led a lot of the way that, that I then kind of like went with it and then essentially I was just supported by the museum and then also um with Hayley as as well my support worker um who really kind of produced the event on like my end like she did so much and was um just brilliant to bounce ideas off and help me kind of shape my thoughts because obviously my thoughts are generally quite all over the place so like sort of help helping me kind of um sort of really sort of chisel <laughs> chisel away and kind of work out um work out what what I wanted to work out what I wanted to do it was like yeah so so the, the, all of that support helped me I think do something that I like I genuinely really wanted to do and I think I think it could have so easily been in a in a different set of circumstances an event like this so easily could have been something that I just like kind of had to do because it was part of the residency and I had to kind of get out of the way it turned it, it what it turned into was a completely different phase that started with the initial residency and then moved on to this and then it's going to move on to the to the to the object I'm making with kind of like making the book that is the really exciting thing you know that, I'm so pleased to hear that because that is absolutely the the kind of intention with the the, the closing event from our point of view is that actually it's a it's a staging post for the next 
steps in whatever the direction the practice is going on following on from the, the the time researching so that's really really encouraging to hear um i mean looking back at your because we're running the residency again um this year uh fantastic. looking back at your time on the residency is there any uh kind of advice uh, like having been through the process that that you uh, think would be helpful to share with um the uh, the artists who who, who do the residency next i mean i think um, it, it just it obviously depends on on preferences but but for for me i'd just be like kind of communicate and like mm. have discussions with the, with the museum and be, be like really curious not just in the objects but in like the, the people who work in the in the museum and um and and people who have and and you know people who have like real in-depth knowledge of of um what the museum does and and what the collections hold um and 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 also kind of why something's there that's the fascinating thing it's like you know why are there like an insane number of chairs and <laughs> you know there's like a, there's a reason for that and it's, it's really interesting and like, like engage with like the history of the museum as well like it, it's, it's it's really kind of like fascinating and 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 you know the museum itself has changed so much within this like furniture making museum to be in this kind of the the museum it is today the fact that the museum's been through this kind of like process of renewal and change and is still going kind of through that in terms of opening the new galleries and changing their changing their focus and like broadening the focus a lot it's like that's such an exciting time to be to be working with museum of the home so like definitely embrace and ask about that i'd, I'd absolutely I'd, I'd absolutely say that thank you and thank you so much for for sort of talking to us today uh just one last question in terms of i mean uh yeah what, what else have you got going on i mean i'm sure you had stuff happening um outside of the residency what what are kind of future projects and stuff have you have you got coming up well actually really interestingly and directly sort of directly related uh to the residency is i'm doing it like a small like a sort of online kind of fellowship thing with them um, the museum and um, like M mkng in hamburg uh -huh. and um and that is about digital collections and kind of making digital collections more accessible and actually it's it's me um, i'm working the team like me and janine who was my support worker when i just started with museum of the home who's kind of like um who has done uh, her like research is kind of like around kind of like museums and audiences and things like that so it's it's really really interesting to kind of take my experiences at museum of the home my experiences in in general um of of museums but also more specifically my experiences as an artist using museum collections to then kind of like sort of take this into basically kind of this kind of like ideas generation um around um a, around digital collections um because i you know i think digital collections do kind of pose this sort of big question for sort of like sort of museums how do how do you get when especially for museums that are like very object-based how do you get people to kind of engage with these sort of like digital representations of objects and like what what are digital collections actually for uh so so that's been like super super interesting and i wouldn't have even known that i was interested in that if i hadn't done this as well right. um you know so, so so that's really really good um in terms of other stuff i um i just had a as i said i just was part of this kind of collaborative uh exhibition at uh, apt gallery in deptford um where i had a kind of uh, like a sort of five channel sort of sound installation i'm working on some theater stuff at the minute working on uh as a composer on a project called who plays who which is about representations of disability in cinema uh, which is something that's going to be did an R&D at the Barbican that's going to be on in July at the Albany Theatre in Deptford again so they'll be doing lots of work in Deptford which is <laughs> always good I do like Deptford um, and I am doing a project at the Bodleian Library uh, for the Sensational Books exhibition which is another thing where me and my collaborator um, Shan Hutchins are making a, um, a, a way of kind of like making a book that contains interviews of different artists, um, which um, interviews of different artists all relating to kind of like um, the intersection between books and text and the senses. Um, 
it's tons of stuff yes. <laughs> it's absolutely loads of stuff like <laughs> and, and also just kind of trying to find um trying to kind of just make just kind of like make more work not for specific commissions as as as, as well and can just definitely expand on my kind of like sort of printmaking work and kind of object making work yeah thank you so much for for yeah taking part and for yeah really engaging with it all and yeah for talking to us today it's been really brilliant oh uh, no no worries uh, thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity i mean like <laughs> it was like a massive privilege uh, i hope uh, yeah i hope that you can feel